Hi, thanks you all for joining this session, especially thanks to Dennis Ragnar for the invitation. It is a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Laura Gatti and I am the co-founder of Quantum South, a quantum computing startup which began operating last year in Uruguay. In this session, I will briefly tell you about my first experience with this growing world of quantum computing. Next, I will talk about Quantum South, its beginnings and its potential. And finally, I want to share with you as a research and as a teacher in quantum computing in Uruguay, my thoughts about, about the implication of the existence of Quantum South. When I finished high school, I got a full scholarship to study telecommunication in a private, private, private university here in Uruguay. Although my undergraduate degree is in telecommunication, I never enjoyed this particular field so much. I always liked mathematics. My mother is a high school math teacher and she made me love mathematics since I was a child. Um, and I definitely enjoyed the math in courses during my undergrad, but I didn't like the technical part of telecommunication so much. When I had to choose my final project by the year of 2011, two of my senior professors, Dr. Andre Fonseca and Dr. Prime Buxman, so and pay attention to my academic preference and they offer me a new option. They were working a new topic. This new topic was quantum computing and according to them, it could be a great match for me. They were developing a quantum computer simulator in Scilab. Scilab is like an open and free version of MATLAB. And they need a person to document the process unify the format and, if it possible, create new functionalities. So I took this offer and did the show. As you can imagine, my beginning in quantum computing was hard. I had to learn the fundamentals of the theory quickly because I only had one year to complete the project. The truth is that I fell in love with quantum computing and then I decided to do a master's degree in it also here in Uruguay. I took formal courses in quantum computing and information theory. At the time, the only master's program in Uruguay offering, offering master courses were ruled by quantum mechanics physicists and did not specifically coincide with the topic of my thesis that was discrete quantum systems. I think that this, I think that this mismatch was basically due to my mathematical approach to the topic. One of the members of my master's thesis committee was Professor Jesus Garcia Lacalle from the Polytechnic University of Madrid. He was the author of one of the models that I specifically studied in my thesis. Uh, he liked my work and invited to, invited to me to do my PhD with him as director. So the following year, I enrolled at the Polytechnic University of Madrid and found funding for a two-year research stay there. I really enjoy it. I continue working on the same topic, but only focusing on the model of Dr. Garcia Lacalle. The model that we ended up publishing contains only two gates, but with these two gates, we proved that the model fulfilled the most important quantum properties as uh, like superposition, like entanglement, parallel, parallelism, and the most important that it's a universal model, in, universal in the sense that any guy can be uh, implemented with the required precision using only the gates of the model. The, but the main property of the model is that the set of state that can be achieved from the computational basis applying these two gates can be created as vectors with, real, with a real and, and an, an imaginary integral part as coordinates, 
except for a normalization factor of square root of 2 to the power of an integral. In a certain way, this model is a quantum computing, computing toy model. It's a toy model. Very clever, but far away from the real and tricky quantum computers. And when I returned to Uruguay in 2018, no one was working in any type of research similar to, to mine. And I began to overthink and I began to have serious doubts about the viability and the, and the relevance of my research. Then I took a risky decision and I decided to do a two year, two years master degree in economic history. I know you are, you must are thinking what is the link because between these two fields, but trust me, it has a link. I choose this master because it focuses on how technological change affect our lives and how human capital is crucial to be at the frontier at knowledge and production. Despite the fact that Uruguay is a, a very small agrarian country, our population is close to 3 million people, I discovered that our software industry achieves more than 14% uh, of our GDP. That we, were, that we have a flourishing and mature industry in a, key, in a key sector of the world economy. And while I was learning all these things and trying to figure out how to use my knowledge in this context, I, I don't know how to say it, but miracles happened. A high school teacher who knew my academic background put me in contact with a new research group at University of Montevideo, one of the universities of Uruguay, that was working on a challenge based on quantum computing. I found a multidisciplinary group made up of professors and students of civil, telecommunication, industrial and computer science engineers, and also people from the software industry. The group was beginning to research on quantum computing one of the members, Dr. Gerardo Beltrame, a physicist, laid the physical foundation and, the, and then they received a quantum ambassador from IBM, Dr. Roberto Loredo, who introduced them to quantum computing in following a guide computing approach. When I joined the group, they were working on problem number five of the Airbus challenge. The problem was aircraft loading optimization. And although this was not my martial field, I found my knowledge very useful to, co to collaborate with them. And at the end of 2019, we had a potential solution and we made a submission. We had the feeling that we have done a really good job and gained invaluable experience for us. Thus, Martin Machin, who has a long history in technological ventures, and Rafael Sotelo, head of the research department at the University of Montevideo, proposed us to the members of our group to be a part of a startup in quantum computing. This was the beginning of Quantum South. We continued working on the possible extension and implement and implementation of our solution in different platforms. We, we, for example, we use QuickKit, the way these two had his own computers and own simu similar simulators, and on a notion solution too, like Ticket for from quantum computing computing. And right now we are trying on bracket that belong to Amazon. In early 2020, we were selected to participate in an acceleration program for technological startup IoT Trav in the UK. And in a certain way, the pandemic helped us, helped us because the event went virtual and several of our staff were able to participate remotely. 
We took this opportunity to improve our business plan and build business ties with airline and maritime cargo companies. The cargo problem has a lot of, a lot of restrictions that must be taken into account in a limited time. Mm, in, in air cargo traffic, for example, it is stipulated that for each 1% increase the cargo load factor, revenue can be increased by 1.6% while keeping cargo yield constant. So there are really opportunities to take advantage of quantum technology in this in industry. And our goal, goal is to achieve better results for the conventional solutions available today by leveraging of quantum computing software. Although we are in touch with different reference of quantum computing networks in America and Europe as university and as a company, it's important for us to help future engineers to develop, to develop quantum capacities. In this line, since last May, the University of Montevideo has been a member of the Microsoft Quantum Network as a research and as a curricular partner. During the last semester, I've been the professor in charge of an introductory course in quantum computing. And surprisingly, even with COVID-19, 19, certain students took the course showing a high attendance rate and a real commitment. In fact, several of them are looking at, at internship opportunities with, with us in Quantum South and abroad too. In this event, in this particular event, I think it is important to comment that 12 of these 30 students were women, women beginning in Quantum, and I'm really, really happy about it. For me, it's a wonderful news. In, in October, Airbus announced, announced the Quantum Company Challenge shortlist, and we were on it. That really encouraged us to continue with, uh, with our work, because only five groups made it, and they hailed from France, Holland, Italy, Germany, China, and there we were, Uruguay. So for us, it was amazing. We did not win, but we have lived up to expectations, and indeed we have done a good show, especially for a newcomer group like us. I'm very proud to be a part of this team, not just for the academic side, but for something more like a proof of work. We can be at the frontier. We can and we must prepare our, our students for the near future because they will be the protagonists. Projects like Quantum South are an invaluable source of jobs for young research like myself, myself an active creator of effective demand for better human capital in our country. I think that this is all that I want to share with you. I hope that you, you found interesting this side. 